Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin upon his visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The U.S. Secretary of Defense conveyed the greetings of President Joe Biden and his appreciation for the Kingdom's important role in evacuating American and Afghan civilians as well as his appreciation for the deep-rooted bilateral ties. His Majesty welcomed Austin and th tasked him with conveying his greetings to the U.S. President. He discussed the deep-rooted bilateral ties and strategic cooperation fields. He affirmed that the two countries have maintained a partnership that extends 120 years and that the kingdom is committed to humanitarian work for Afghanistan and its people. His Majesty praised the contributions of the American community in the kingdom and the role of the U.S. administration in maintaining cooperation with its allies to ensure security and stability in the region and the world. Various regional and international matters of mutual interest were discussed. For his part, Austin expressed his appreciation for his Majesty's hospitality and affirmed the bilateral cooperation to support the, the security of the region. He also appreciated the Kingdom's hosting of the Fifth Fleet and the Kingdom's cooperation in the military field. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace the Governor of the Central Bank of Kuwait, Dr. Muhammad Yusuf Al Hashil, where he presented His Majesty with a commemorative coin in celebration of the 40th anniversary of the establishment of the Gulf Cooperation Council. His Majesty the King welcomed the Governor of the Central Bank of Kuwait, hailing his efforts in enhancing and developing economic and banking relations, as well as cooperation between the two countries. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation for the valuable gift, which documents the comprehensive and great achievements made by the GCC since its establishment and honors the role of their majesties and highnesses, the founding leaders, and their vision that established the success of this Gulf system. His Majesty the King also expressed his pride in the well-established brotherly relations between Bahrain and Kuwait and the development of bilateral cooperation at all levels.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed his congratulations on the occasion of the new school year 2021-2022 and the return of students to various governmental and private educational institutions and all members of the educational field wishing a successful year to all. His Majesty the King expressed his pride and appreciation of the outstanding results and excellence achieved in the previous academic year thanks to what the government has provided, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the follow-up of the Supreme Council for the development of education and training and the fruitful efforts of the Ministry of Education and Educational Institutions, as well as thanks to the various capabilities and means provided to ensure the sustainability of education despite the challenges imposed by the pandemic. His Majesty expresses confidence that these efforts will continue during the new school year, noting that there are many evidences that affirm the efforts and achievements of the people of Bahrain in the fields of education. His Majesty noted that students are on the path of success and excellence and they are the future of of the country and its development. His Majesty the King also affirmed that this, his support of the educational march and keenness on providing all the possibilities for the students of Bahrain to become able to provide more creativity and leadership in order for Bahrain to become a human model for coexistence and tolerance. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Royal Decree 89 of the year 2021, amending Article 1 of Decree 50 of the year 2019 on restructuring the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning. According to the decree, uh, Clause C of Paragraph 1 of the third Article 1 of Decree 50 of the year 2019 on restructuring the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning will be repealed. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 90 of the year 2021 restructuring the Urban Planning and Development Authority, UPDA, as follows. UPDA Chief Executive Officer with the rank of Under Secretary shall be responsible for, first, the Human and Financial Directorate, second, Deputy CEO for Urban Development with the rank of Assistant Under Secretary will be responsible for the Directorate of Plans, Implementation, the Directorate of Urban Planning and the Directorate of Planning and Urban Design. Third, Deputy CEO for Urban Planning with the rank of Assistant Undersecretary will be responsible for the Directorate of Studies and Urban Policies, the Directorate of Detailed Planning and the Directorate of Infrastructure Planning and Services. Royal Decree 48 of the year 2017 on organizing the Urban Planning and Development Authority was abrogated. His Majesty also issued Royal Decree 91 of the year 2021 appointing Abdullah Rabia as Bahrain's Ambassador Extraordinary and a Plenipotentiary to Sudan. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 92 of the year 2021 appointing Sheikh Ali bin Abdurrahman bin Ali Al Khalifa and Saudi Hassan al Saud as Hassan al Nusuf as ambassadors at the Foreign Affairs Ministry. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited Isa Air Base. His Royal Highness met with the Bahrain Defense Force BDF members who participated in the evacuation operations in Afghanistan. His Royal Highness was received by the Commander in Chief of the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa alongside a number of ministers and senior officials. His Royal Highness highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander's continuous support of the BDF. His Royal Highness then paid homage to the sacrifices and services of the BDF personnel. His Royal Highness thanked the members of the BDF in support of agencies who took part in the humanitarian mission. His Royal Highness then commented uh, that the BDF played a key role in contributing to the provisions and facilities and support which assisted with Afghan evacuation efforts. His Royal Highness noted that the BDF's assistance is a testament to the strong bilateral ties that exist between Bahrain and the U.S. His Royal Highness echoed the sense of pride that his Majesty the King has expressed towards the efforts made by those who participated in the Afghan evacuations. Furthermore, His Royal Highness commended Bahrain's skilled forces, workforces, who have carried out their national duties in an honorable manner. His Royal Highness also expressed pride in the Kingdom's national workforce and wished them continued success.
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, head of the General Sports Authority of GSA, and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday received the President of Bahrain Royal Equestrian Endurance Federation brief, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the President of Bahrain Mind and Esports Federation, Hamid Rahma. The meeting was attended by the Deputy President of the GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the CEO of the GSA, Dr. Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar. His Highness Sheikh Khaled welcomed the guest expression appreciation for the two federations' efforts through developing plans and programs in a manner that develops sports and the skills of their affiliates. His Highness was briefed on the future plans that will be implemented by the two federations during the coming period, expressing hope for the continuation of efforts to develop and advance Bahraini sports. For their part, the President of Brief and the President of Bahrain Minded Esports Federation expressed their appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Khaled for his role in serving the sports sector stressing that his efforts are positively reflected in accelerating progress in this vital sector. They added that the two federations will continue their efforts by implementing plans and programs that are in line with the policies of the GSA headed by His Highness to develop the sports system at all levels and serve the present and future of sports in the kingdom. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday received the Bahrain Ambassador to Oman, Jum'a Al Kabi. The meeting was attended by the deputy president of the GSA, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the CEO of the GSA, Dr. Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar. His Highness welcomed the guests and affirmed the bilateral ties with Oman based on the keen interest of His Majesty the King to further develop them, as well as that of the Sultan of Oman. He affirmed the unity of the GCC in all fields and discuss the ways in which further cooperation with Oman in the field of sports can be achieved. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives and Head of the Bahrain Delegation to the Fifth World Congress of Speakers of Parliament, Fawzi Zainal, gave a talk at the event on gender equality. She affirmed that such equality is a cornerstone of His Majesty the King's vision for all state institutions and that Bahraini women are experiencing progress thanks to the keen interest of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and the President of the Supreme Council for Women. She presented on the Bahraini experience through the formation of various committees in coordination with the SC whereby the public sector alone has 45 committees. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Hosea Zainal, met with a number of personalities on the sidelines of the Fifth World Congress of Speakers of Parliament. They included the Parliament Speakers of Kuwait, Marzoug al Ghanem, Deputy Speaker of the South Korean National Assembly, Park byung sok the Speaker of the Zimbabwean Parliament, Jacob Modina. The Chairman of China's National Assembly, Li Zanchu. The Head of Uruguayan National Assembly, Senate and Vice President, Beatriz Argimon. And the Secretary General of the Interparliamentary Union, Martin Chagong. Zainal expressed her pride in the level of cooperation among GCC countries and their parliaments based on their common destiny and interests. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives also participated in the consultative meeting in Vienna among Arab countries, where she affirmed the importance of joint Arab work in various international forums in order to tackle the challenges of the region. The meeting also discussed other topics, including combating terrorism and containing the pandemic. Finally, Zainal affirmed that Bahrain has taken advanced steps to contain the pandemic thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King and the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. Government school students have resumed classes as of September 7th, following the Ministry of Education's completion of all necessary preparations to combine in-person and virtual attendance. The Minister, Dr. Majid Naimi, marked the occasion by thanking His Majesty the King for his keen interest in advancing education, as well as His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for his constant support in this regard. He affirmed that the Ministry is carrying out all directives by the Supreme Council for the Development of Education, as headed by the Deputy Prime Minister, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mbarak Al Khalifa. The minister visited schools to inspect their level of preparation and application of all precautionary measures. 
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Ben Rashid Zayani, met with the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee of the Council of Representatives, Mohammed Ibrahim Assisi Al Bouinin, and the Chairman of the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee at the Shura Council, Yusuf Ahmed Al Ghatam, and members of the two committees. Al Zayani has briefed the Parliament on Bahrain's efforts regarding the latest developments in Afghanistan. The Minister added that the developments in Afghanistan require quick evacuation within the framework of international cooperation. He noted that Bahrain had received a request from the U.S. government to assist in the evacuation efforts, and the kingdom responded by providing support and assistance with the evacuation operation. The kingdom received uh, flights from Kabul at Bahrain International Airport in preparation for the transit of the evacuees to intended destinations. The minister said that the evacuation was carried out according to plans, using the kingdom as a transit point before evacuees could reach their final destinations. The competent authorities took the necessary measures in accordance with the precautionary measures. He added that Gulf Air operated the first evacuation flight to the United States as part of the evacuation operations from Afghanistan within the framework of international relief efforts and humanitarian solidarity with the Afghan people. As the Yeni said that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister had received telephone calls from U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and from U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, in which they expressed gratitude to the kingdom for its contributions. He also noted the directives issued by His Majesty the King to provide urgent humanitarian aid to Afghanistan. As Ziyani said, the royal initiative aimed to assist brothers and friends and help the conflict for conflicted and the needy in various parts of the world is within Bahrain's endeavors to reinforce international solidarity based on the fraternal and humanitarian ties it has with various people. As Ziyani also gave a brief on the kingdom's close follow-up on the situation in Afghanistan and its coordination with friendly and brotherly countries, especially GCC states, to ensure the stability of Afghanistan. The president of the Sustainable Energy Authority, the SEA, Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, launched the Solar Energy Systems Project at the Dar Aqua Fish Farm. Mirza developed a speech or delivered a speech in which he thanked the kingdom's leadership for its support and encouragement to benefit from clean and sustainable energy for sustainable development in line with the kingdom's 2030 economic vision. He also hailed the outstanding role of the Agriculture and Marine Resources Affairs at the Works Municipalities Affair Affairs and Urban Planning Ministry in supporting projects and initiatives that aim to develop the agricultural sector in the kingdom and enhances its contributions in the economy. He affirmed that the Solar Energy Systems Project aims to benefit from renewable energy to reduce the carbon footprint of the project as well as reduce its energy consumption costs. Mirza also said that the SEA seeks to make Bahrain an outstanding center for clean energy in cooperation with all authorities and ministries and government institutions and joint coordination with the private sector, affirming that the authority encourages and supports all initiatives that develop the renewable energy sector in Bahrain. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus has approved the AstraZeneca COVID Shield booster shot for those 18 and over who had their second dose of the AstraZeneca COVID Shield vaccine at least six months ago. The task force clarified that those aged 60 and above and who are immunocompromised and had their second dose of AstraZeneca COVID Shield at least six months ago also have the option to receive either Pfizer BioNTech or as a booster shot or the same type of vaccination as their first and second dose. The task force stated that the vaccination protocols have been developed in line with the Kingdom of Bahrain's stringent efforts to combat COVID-19 and maintain the health and safety of all. Eligible individuals can register for a booster shot by visiting the Ministry of Health's website on healthalert.gov.bh or via the Be Aware application. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,152,040 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,093,547 had taken the second, and 263,356 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 939 with 104 recoveries and 105 registered new cases. 59 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 34 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.